Sergei Berups, my good friend, uh, finally back in Belgrade as a free man. And as we saw in the picture in the beginning of the video, you came back to uh, the airport in Belgrade with uh, your mom and I was also there. And you got your bag of Nesquik. But Sergei, you've been actually not arrested but kidnapped in Ukraine. What happened? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh... Good afternoon, everyone. So we was uh, reporters, reporters, um, war reporters in working in Donetsk, and we have some plans to go to Rostov region in Russia to film some reports about uh, these refugees uh, from Ukraine, from Donbas, Donbas region there, and we did this uh, uh, like report, documentary, and then we started to getting back to Donetsk by taking taxi and just moving there. But as we just uh, crossed the border with Ukraine, the next uh, stop was this uh, little village, Ambosivka. There was Ukrainian checkpoint. Uh, there, was, uh, there was located uh, uh, Ukrainian territorial battalion uh, Kyiv bus. They stopped it, as usual, and they just started to check our documents. And uh, then they just uh, started to be angry, so we are looking suspicious what we what we doing here at that time, why we are just not in the army, why, what are we doing in Donetsk, why in Donetsk, where's our, uh, I don't know, some, our security from uh, service uh, of uh, state uh, security, so from SBU. So why not uh, no one with us? So what we doing here? But we just tell them, tell tell them that how it's possible to go from uh, Russia to Donetsk with Ukrainian uh, security forces. So it, it's impossible. It's illogical. So. But uh, just yeah. just for the uh, viewers who are not familiar with uh, all the terms in Ukraine, could you tell us who is Kribas? Kribas is one of turtle battalions, so just to 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 make in, to make clear uh, image. Uh, oh, I have to say that uh, there's uh, Ukra uh, in this is that, is that conflict on the Ukrainian side. There's Ukrainian army, and also there's so-called national guard that was created before uh, President Poroshenko was elected. Before because. Uh, until there's no le le legitima leg legitimate president, uh, there's no person who can just sign the start of so-called anti-touristic operation. So they just created so-called National Guard, like that's uh, actually that army, but it uh, under inter internal ministry. So, so and it's like police, but it's not police. It's actual army. So there's National Guard, and there's also a third side. That's uh, the turtle battalions. Some main part of them are, are sponsored by some oligarchs, and uh, by this group was, as as far as I know, uh, is under control of uh, Ministry of Defense. Of so this is not one of those uh, voluntary battalions like Azov or Ivan yeah, battalion. It's, or in, in like some that. in some ways it's voluntary battalion, but it's not like Azov. But uh, almost the same, just because there's a lot of uh, battalions, m m more than maybe a few, 50 battalions in Ukraine, so in, the, uh, in that quality. So uh, there is, as always, there is Nazi uh, ideology, there is also some nationalistic Dnieper, there is some like uh, combined, f combined from all. Uh, soldiers that the battalion on Kivbat because there were some soldiers from Ukrainian army, some volunteers. Just mix it. So uh, there is uh, actually a lot of uh, Nazi ideology in the Krivbas battalion. I am not sure for uh, concerning Krivbas. I can say that uh, maybe for the Dnieper one, that I was just uh, uh, we was moved to Dnieper one. Okay, well let's, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but for for Krivbas, I'm not sure. They are really nationalistic, really anti-Russian, but. Uh, Anti-Russian, I mean uh, Russian Federation. So, but not uh, Nazi. Maybe someone 
someone from this one was, but uh, I didn't uh, mind them. But you're Ukrainian citizen. Yeah. I and am. and uh, even if you're uh, ethnic Russian, but actually your own countrymen, they kidnapped you. Uh, what was their reasoning? So yeah, uh, not just me, uh, also to my friends, and and was that was very curious. So uh, we had a Ukrainian uh, this press card off of Ukrainian television. So one hundred twenty channel. So you can promise you can news channel. So we have that legitimation. Yeah. We have passports, and all all of us we were we were. Uh, Ukrainian citizens, but they think that we have just falsified documents. So even if Ukrainian citizens were working for Russia, so no, so they just uh, have some you no know, some uh, some doubts. Uh, maybe we we will look at suspicious, but I'm I don't think so because we have uh, all just uh, filmed uh, videos of this refugee camps. So it was clear that we was doing this uh, this stuff. So just to, on the record, this was your colleague Sergei and Roman. What was the last name again? Uh, Natyuk, Roman Natyuk, Sergei Boyko. Uh -huh. uh, so you were working all for uh, 120 television? Yeah, yeah. At that moment, yes. So we just, uh, and uh, we, ha we get some comment to do this report in this region so and we did it successfully so and we just was uh, on the way to Donetsk back and what happened how long did they keep you what did they do to you uh, so first they just uh, uh, arrested us because they just uh, find some information on our you know stuff they just starting to uh, uh, Checking our stuff, what we have in our rucksacks and you know, our bags, they found some note, uh, some notes uh, with uh, some part of interview with Russian volunteers. But they just uh, think that it was uh, a diary of Sergei. It's it's your terrorists. You are there. Why you know this stuff? But uh, it, it was just I just wrote this interview. This just some parts of it. No, no, no. It's your diary. You are you are just a uh, mercenary, diary, yeah. You are mercenary, Russian mercenary. So uh, and and ATC. So then they just find out uh, that we have some other materials like destroyed Ukrainian uh, positions, uh, some in Luhansk region, and also they fa for, uh, have found uh, this uh, press conference of uh, Igor Stelkov. Uh, Former Minister of Defense, he was at that time in that position. Of the self-proclaimed Republic of Yeah, yeah, Donetsk. Don he was yeah. not the Defense Minister in Ukraine. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. I, Just to clarify. Yeah, yeah, of you. course, yeah. So, and they were, they started to be uh, angry, angry. Well, why we did you film that that interview? Well, we said it's not interview. It's just press conference. There was CNN, uh, ABC, I don't know a lot. Of uh, main parts, there was Western televisions, so Western channels, Western press. <laughs> what is our guilty? Uh, is it prohibited in Ukraine to film uh, any press conferences, even separate conferences of separatists? Uh, so, but uh, no matter, it was no matter for them. They didn't care about it, so they just. Uh, uh, Keep us uh, first time just to us uh, taking this so-called uh, this uh, scotch stride and just yeah they they uh, mistreated you they beat you also not no? they they wanted but they didn't start it because we were just uh, keep it from sometimes that's like a uh, little like uh, there was some uh, near this road there was like stride from this uh, like little wood. Uh, woman, so we was there, and uh, we wait for some time, and uh, there the, the commander of this whole that li little unit ca came. He said, "Why we why we arrested them? Why why is they just uh, we was immobilized? So just like this." Sitting. With duct tape. What? With duct tape. Yeah, yeah. I think it's called. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, 
and uh, he just take this knife and just cut it. It was uh, uh, bad, and then they said, okay, so go to eat something this for dinner. <laughs> we have good conversation, good dinner. Uh, he, they prepared some place to sleep. It was okay after that, but uh, we had some dialogues with them. So, but then they were just, uh, they said, okay, you have to wait some time for morning, they will just, uh, some uh, the uh, general command, they will just send some car to pick up you and you will go, so you will give some information, some, then some conversation to figure out who you are. Okay, so did they inform the Ministry of Defense in Kiev? No, they didn't. They even prohibited us to contact SBU, so Security Service of Ukraine, even uh, reduction, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this... Um, Over the 150 Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, we have visit cards, so okay, you can, just you can call them and uh, check who we are, so you can call SBU and ADC, so, but they didn't, and they prohibited us to do it, and uh, unfortunately uh, they just... Uh, Violated Ukrainian uh, uh, law because uh, first they have to clarify why we was uh, stopped, why we was arrested for a few uh, hours. After three hours, they have to uh, make in some uh, charges uh, against yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, charge. Yeah. What was the reason? And after uh, after one day, so like uh, twenty four hours, uh, have to be some decision of some court or some some police, but there was nothing like this. So this was August 1st, yes? Yeah, this was August 1st, yeah, August 1st. And on 2nd August, uh, we just waited a whole morning until, I guess, uh, uh, that 1, 1 p.m. So, and then some car came to pick up us and move to that, uh, uh, that the generals, I know how to, how to say that, General staff. So the general, yeah. Uh, I mean, headquarters. I mean, yeah, headquarters of general yes. staff of Cruz Bas Battalion. So. Where is that located? Uh, we don't know because uh, when we just uh, approached uh, this place, uh, they said us to to close our eyes, just to, to take some of our stuff. So. Did they blindfold you or? What? Did they blindfold you? Yeah, yeah, blind, like uh -huh. blindfold. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. We have to obey. Mm. We, we did it. So. So later you were transferred to the uh, Nepal one battalion. Uh, well, why it was, was that after? Happen? It was after. after. Yeah. So we just was the headquarters uh, for some time. Uh, uh, but I know we were, we just was uh, in some region near this Star Besho or so some like little region inside Donetsk region. Star Bashel, so uh, because there was some where we just was moving on the road, there was some table welcome to Star Bashel region. So. Mm. And uh, we was there, and this, uh, the, some soldiers started to ask us who we are, so uh, and uh, from what television we are, so there was a little bit uh, angry, aggressive, some not all, but they just don't respect us. Uh, as I, as far as I'm not, so but then to just uh, uh, just uh, saw so on the ground all us from the car and uh, started to just to pull to press us mentally, so just to get information they maybe they tried uh, to get uh, our some uh, how to say. You can say in Serbian if you don't yeah. have the most English. Yeah, it was a prison, yeah. To recognize you. Yeah, to not to, to, to sell. They are prison under some spoon. That you, you should admit that you were spy. Yeah, yeah. So, so who, when, why sent you there? So there was a question to uh, everyone of us, uh, just first for Roman, that you then Sergei Bank, and then me. And then the first thing I said, was just. Uh, that's so why I just started to uh, just to rough you up. 
Wow. Me too. No, they just beat me a little bit, uh, mm. not not a lot. Just using this Kalashnikov for uh, beating me on my le uh, on my mm, back. Mm -hmm. Make the same. It's for you, for more Ukrainian people. So they just think it. Maybe think it. Maybe just enjoy it that that pretending that uh, they think that I'm Russian spy. So just a curious detail. Did they speak to you in Russian or Ukrainian language? Mm, Russian and Ukrainian, and and some mixed language. We call it Soviet. So in Russian, in Ukrainian, and some mixed language. But anyway. Uh, how long did you stay with Krizbas Patel? It was just a few hours and then we just was uh, thrown to into the cars and we was moved to Mariupol. Uh, we are after we just <laughs> uh, understand that we are in we was in Mariupol but at that moment we didn't know where we were going on. So but we was moved to uh, to Mariupol and they just uh, the one star that I don't Forget that was uh, during this uh, moving. That uh, it's uh, good to say that it was that car that wasn't uh, uh, property of this battalion. They just take it uh, it from some civilians, and uh, the, the owner of that car was inside this uh, um, epic. In the uh, trunk. In yeah, the trunk of the car. In the trunk with uh, yeah, with some pocket on his he head. So, uh, that is not a normal way to wage the war, is it? Or yeah. maybe it is. Unfortunately. So, but uh, they just uh, in the middle of this tra uh, trip, they just stop it and they just add some one people uh, to sit near us. But they just uh, uh, um, this is a study this is a. And they they put handcuffs on. Yeah, so, yeah. Put handcuffs in, but just, just, they just so uh, very hard pressed it, just almost to uh, to break my hand. It was very, very painful. So you have no blood circulation in your hand? Yeah, uh, then I have no circulation, but it's very like hell. That uh, one hour of our time was like really like hell. It was great pain. Just I was screaming a little because it was in, just in, impossible to keep calm, actually. And then, then just uh, I was a little bit calm because there was uh, no blood circulation. There's no feeling, but it was really horrible. So then we just uh, came to Mariupol. Then just say okay, we can wait on this asphalt. We sit in line, can sit or line on this asphalt and wait. We waited, I guess, for maybe two, three, four hours there. And we also asked, please call our reduction. So uh, this newsroom, please. But then, no, no, no. We know what what person we have to contact. So the, it's not your problem. So, but also they push a bit just to contact anyone. And then they just, uh, after these few hours, they sent us to sit in another car and we was started uh, to move in another direction. And that was uh, the driver, that one man that seated uh, in the front of me. Uh, that was uh, guys from this another battalion, Dnieper 1. They uh, say they just uh, appeared out of all nothing, or what? They appeared from nothing. We, uh, we don't know. We was uh, we uh, we were blindfolded. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So maybe there was this because in Mariupol there is general staff for this whole so-called uh, anti-terrorist operation. But uh, I I have to say it's not anti-terrorist operation. It's civil war. It's uh, that worst uh, in even in just. Uh, in st in the strate strategical sense, it's not anti-terrorist, it's just very stupid uh, war operation, just... Uh, Anti-terrorist uh, attack operation with uh, shelling civilian yeah. areas with uh, heavy artillery and aircraft. Yeah, yeah. So, I would say that is terror. Yeah, or yeah and even, even if you will just uh, look at that so-called terrorist, uh, it's very hard to find real terrorists. Of course, there are some criminals, uh, there was any time, 
You can find any time in any state some criminals. Of course, in the, at the time of war, there will be some activization of them. But to call this uh, Donetsk uh, is this militia to call them terrorists? Yeah, of course. For example, if they just blow up some school in Kiev, they they became terrorists. But if they just find them, you can just call them. I don't know some rebels or any any term, but uh, you can call them criminals if you want according to Ukrainian law. But you can call them terrorists because they didn't uh, uh, they. Because they didn't attack civilians. Yeah, not not actually. Yeah, maybe some attacks. Of, but for example, if they even attack some civilians, it's like crime. If they are criminals, killers, anyone. But they, if they have some tactic, because terrorism is tactic, some kind of tactic for some political means, some for some purpose. So you use it for to terrorize, to uh, making some or just uh, to spread the fear. Uh, that is terrorism. Sergey, uh, tell me more about this uh, Dnieper one battalion who uh, Krivbat battalion gave you to. Yeah, so this uh, Dnieper one battalion is the battalion so called uh, of the uh, but uh, uh, of territorial defense, so uh, and it's uh, uh, famous because it was financed by Ukrainian oligarch uh, Ivo Kolomoisky, the one of the most powerful men uh, in Ukraine. And uh, but uh, this battalion is under command of Interior Ministry. So okay. actually, uh, I was uh, calling a source in Washington D.C. on Monday night. I mean, you were kidnapped on Friday night? Uh, evening, yeah. Yes. And uh, actually, what does it mean to you that uh, in Washington, D.C., the uh, Ukrainian government said that you would be released on Monday night? What does that mean about the Ukrainian government's knowledge about your kidnapping? Yeah, I guess they knew that I was kidnapped. They knew it for sure. Uh, because we was in the Mariupol, so they just registered us as arrested persons, so they have to know about us. Maybe I'm sure they was informed about it. So then we were just was transferred to Nepopetrovsk region mm -hmm. to some uh, uh, base, uh, military base of Nepal one. I guess because when we were there, I heard uh, some uh, dialogue. On mobile phone of some soldiers that saying uh, hello, I am that that in the calling his name is I am from Dnieper, so that means so he from that battle on Dnieper one, but it was uh, some secret to us what it what was the place where we was because no one told us where we are, we just knew that we was some somewhere near Dnipropetrovsk. So did they uh, mistreat you? Did they beat you there? There no, but a little bit, uh, but not a lot. That was very insensitive uh, 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 when we were just uh, thrown from the from the cars when we are just was uh, put uh, down on the uh, pavement. Uh, yeah, yeah. So our head was uh, on the asphalt, our heads was on the back. Just they just take knives and just uh, uh, just. Uh, Destroyed our uh, this how to say your clothes and everything. Yeah, yes. all yeah, by knife. Yes. So, so just, uh, uh, how did you just to uh, immobilize it, our hands? Yeah, yeah. They tied your hands. Tied, yeah, our yeah. hands on our back uh, and just uh, pushed down into uh, nine ninety degrees and just lead us uh, to some place by bed, so like this. So it was horrible, and they just very was uh, aggressive when it was just uh, when we arrived there, and then just after uh, I guess maybe one day after one day we were supposed to be uh, shooted. So. Uh, so you were actually afraid for your life. A little bit, yes. At that moment was very, uh, very really. I was a little bit. 
Yeah, it's not the I'm 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 think it's not was Nepal Petrovsk, but some somewhere, somewhere near close was, there. Yeah. Somewhere close to Nepal Petrovsk and I think uh, they have some plans to shoot us. So but uh, But uh Sergey, yeah. um you're also a Christian, you believe in Jesus yeah. in your life. Right. Uh, how did that help you in this situation? Yeah, it was very helpful. It, it gave me hope in that situation and understanding that all, all what's going on in that moment is in uh, God's hand. Uh, when you were uh, kidnapped there, you also had a chance to witness about your faith to, to Sergei and Roma. How did they react to your faith? Yes, they knew about my faith before and so there was no big change to, to give some full witness. But there was a moment where I was very close to be killed. So I heard some uh, whisper of Sergei. He said, uh, Sergei, please pray, because nothing else can help us at this moment. Uh, it seems like we will not be, uh, there's no chance to survive anymore. So just uh, your prayer can help. So in Sergei usually uh, used to be very sarcastic about my faith. He, he just often la laughed at <laughs> looking at me, at my uh, my faith and my lifestyle, Christian lifestyle. He don't believe in God. Mm. But uh, when he was in such a situation, he changed, changed his mind and asked me to pray. <laughs> but I already prayed and just, uh, just uh, said to him very short this uh, prayer for, to repent. Mm -hmm. So he has chance to repent uh, before God. That's wonderful. You you spend some time here, and uh, then the next thing we hear, you appear on a press conference. Yeah. How did you end up there? So. Uh, I to, I will try to get uh, to give some short stories. So we was uh, in that uh, we were just uh, in that uh, military base for five, two five uh, uh, fifth uh, uh, August, and then as uh, we was just asked, to, there was some just dealt with some investigator who asked us who we are, what we did uh, in Donetsk and ATC. And then that investigator understood uh, understood that uh, we are uh, that nothing we can be killed for. So we are uh, there's no guilty on us. So we are just journalists, and uh, they he just gives the comment to release us in du during the day. So he will resolve your question during this day. But at the midnight, I, I guess it was especially midnight, midnight, just also very insensitive, just was uh, a racket and just saw it in some pickup in this uh, place for, you know, this place like uh, for some stuff, not for... For passengers. storage. Yeah, for storage. Yeah. And we was uh, driving for maybe 14 minutes. In, four no, minutes, four zero. Yeah, four, yeah, for forty minutes in some unknown direction, and then one of us, just one per one, just was uh, thrown from the car. And first, that was so on that too. That one question, your second name, uh, just uh, uh, take your dress uh, off and just uh, lie on the ground and just. Uh, uh, and there's two shots, so we thought, uh, we thought uh, he was killed. And uh, Roman or Sergei? Uh, Roman, first yeah. Roman. The same with, was with Sergei. There was just one more question: Who works for DDR, DPR, Donetsk People's Republic? And do you want to live? To to live? To live. To live. To live. Yeah. So he asked, who, who don't want to live? Uh, and also two shots. And uh, then it was almost the same as me, but because uh, I just under understood it after, it was like some 
imitation of the shooting uh, to uh, made made us fear, made us afraid. Mm. So at the same they wanted uh, to kill me. I just started to pray to God to like uh, there was some like uh, Stephen, I guess Stephen Bible uh, just to pray. Bible, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So God uh, uh, opposed it. He forgave. For forgive them because they don't know what they yeah. do. So I'm just praying that pray and prayed to give my life in hand to God and I was prepared to die at that moment. So I I, I prayed. I, I just prayed and prayed because I just was supposed to be killed, I guess so. But no one killed me and just after ten minutes I just not said that no one is near, just take off my uh, this um, blindfold. blindfold, yeah. From my head I, I saw just uh, some uh, forest, uh, just, uh, you know, they just vanished in another direction, that uh, soldiers. Mm. So I just uh, was walking on some, uh, this road in, in this uh, forest to my note, uh, and they are, and just uh, just started to stop some cars. You and started to stop. Yeah, yeah, just and then just one one man just pick up me and just tell him my tragic story, and he just moved us to Nipponzhinsk. And by the way, we just found uh, Sergey holds words on this uh, this road, and then we came here, and then just uh, we just get some clothes, and then uh, police of Nipponzhinsk helped us. And then at the uh, um, afternoon we had that press conference. So Roman, where was he at this time? He was on another place because we just was thought out in uh, different places. Mm -hmm. So Roman was near some village near Nipodzirzinsk. So he just appeared later. In uh, in uh, Serbia we've uh, seen some reports that uh, you were forced to give some statements in this press conference. No, I, I'm not. I I wasn't forced to give this press conference. Uh, we just was uh, at police station at that moment. We just write some our uh, uh, witness witness, uh, witness, statements. witness statements. Yeah. So and uh, then they, they just bring us uh, some new clothes to us uh, and some food. And there one woman just it was uh, present at that press conference asked. If can we give some statements on that press conferences to just say thank you, uh, to just thank uh, uh, to police for help and just uh, say a few words about your situation because a lot of press and journalists want uh, wants to know what it was. So and there was also uh, our colleague from uh, 120 channel. So what what you, you was able to see this press conference on the internet? So that was from that channel. Uh, that was uh, this reporter. So I just agree to say uh, oh, <laughs> this few words, and I just agreed to came there. But uh, there was some little pressure from one uh, officer from um, SPU security. Yeah, service. yeah. He just uh, uh, not. Uh, it's not like not press, uh, but like he just very uh, give me. A, uh, he said that it uh, will be very good if I will not say what uh, what side it was, Ukraine or not. not but you said it actually it was Ukraine inside, yeah, but you didn't say what unit came out. Yeah, yeah, because he said it's very dangerous for you to be here and to say that. Because it's very dangerous, it's be better not to say here in that place. So it was like some counsel he gave. But, but this must have been a very embarrassing situation for the Ukrainian government, I presume that uh, yeah, the police Yeah, I feel there... it was very great scandal, even the uh, SBU chief Nalivashenko was under this pressure uh, because of our situation, so there was great scandal in uh, interior, for interior ministry and uh, in uh, SBU and other services, so there was a lot, a lot of conflicts and scandals, and even in uh, this defense uh, uh, ministry. So, 
So, I mean, the, the interior ministry, they have command of both the Nepal 1 yeah. battalion and the police. Yeah. And now the police have initiated an investigation yeah. about this kidnapping. So they actually investigate their own side. Yeah, yeah, because, but they have no impact on the Nepal 1. And the, no one knows about the plan, but they they know it, but they have no chance to investigate. The one of officers said to me, so never, uh, say, ne never admit publicly that the, it was the one. So you can just write it in this white statement, mm -hmm. but never publicly because they will find you, they will kill you. Sergey, you eventually made it to uh, Kiev, yeah. where you got in contact with the uh, Ukrainian Union of Journalists and uh, the International Federation of Journalists, who I believe they're upset about the journalists being kidnapped by the government of Ukraine. What kind of legal assistance can they give you? Uh, yeah, they give me a lot of advices. They just made this lawsuit for Ukrainian government, for min uh, internal ministry. And they started to to, to make uh, this whole process to move this uh, uh, case to general prosecution. So because it's uh, real uh, the zone of their uh, they, 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 it's in their interest. Yeah, they, it's to the to protect their rights of journalists. In the yeah, case. of course, and they, they, they're also honest. They, they are a responsibility. A responsibility because yes, yeah, that's, that's their responsibility not just some local police uh, investigators, but to, to it have to be uh, investigated uh, in the general prosecution. So uh, we just uh, give them all information. So and when we just hope the, the, that we give uh, 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 that we give them some chance to you know, apologize before us to this government and we just uh, uh, hope that uh, maybe they will give us some uh, compensation. Because they took your equipment, yeah, all, uh, yeah. everything. For all equipment they took for, took from us. Bulletproof I mean, vest, video yeah. cameras, everything. Yeah, this bulletproof vest, video cameras, photo cameras, tablets, uh, laptops uh, and all our stuff. It's a great amount. Of money, so and, and also uh, the mental distress, leaving yeah. you naked on the side of the road. Of course. Yeah, of course, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, first of all, I'm just uh, very worried for this uh, all equipment because the main part of this equipment wasn't mine; it was of my friends. Uh, some part it was yours. So just uh, I don't want to be in some debt, and I have an opportunity to pay this debt uh, financially. So I hope they just give me back that money. Because they took it from me illegally. Because some people say this is a fascist junta and everything. Maybe this is not the most useful language, but you seem to have some faith in the legal processes in Ukraine that you can actually win a lawsuit. Uh, so I never use use this uh, phrase fascist junta because I don't believe that it is fascist junta in uh, this. Uh, real sense because uh, there is no uh, real, I, I mean, since a fascist, they are just opportunists who use some ultra-nationalistic uh, rhetoric. Uh, they are not, um, some part of course they may be uh, like, uh, almost like na Nazi, some, some people in government, but they are not in key positions. So, but of course they are using uh, this ultra-nationalistic rhetoric, but they are not uh, since uh, Fascist, it's it not so strong like Junta because Junta it's uh, you know military people. There is no lot of military people in the government, so maybe in the their uh, in the actions they are worse than some Junta for for all Ukraine, but uh, it's not an appropriate uh, definition for them. But uh, I don't, I have not much uh, belief in that uh, lawsuit uh, for. For Ukrainian government, because uh, we can see every day, and I saw it personally how much there's 
uh, injustice now in Ukraine. So mm. there's on, a on little chance. Yeah. On all sides, also all on sides, the Russian yeah. side. I mean, you also have a, a close friend, a journalist, yeah. who has been actually kidnapped and severely beaten by Russian Cossack forces. Yeah. So, but there I have little bit more belief for some uh, military tribunal because he yes he was kidnapped. He was uh, hard beaten, uh, hardly beaten. He just uh, was uh, in very, very, uh, very damaged, and he lost also his documents, lost his also equipment. Uh, but it was that was uh, uh, committed by these Cossacks. But they are independent, so they just are not under command of Lugansk People's Republic, not Donetsk People's Republic. They just uh, waging uh, their own war. Yes, like uh, in some little coordination with other forces, but not uh, under their command. And all of that forces don't like them because of that. Uh, uh, a lot of these crimes. And there soon they will be under this tribunal. And you mean by the Donetsk People's Republic in uh, in uh, Donetsk or Luhansk? Look, I guess uh, they will just be judged by Lugansk. Yeah, uh, Lugansk People's Republic because uh, uh, they are so real. Uh, they they committed a lot of uh, crimes. I know about other uh, just cases with, uh, with journalists about other problems, but they just uh, took my friend and uh, just kidnapped actually, and he was. Uh, seven days in prison uh, in just very horrible situation and was uh, he came out from this prison uh, in very horrible uh, condition. Yeah, condition, he physically yeah. beaten and uh, and uh, mentally tortured probably. Not mentally, just so yeah. he was tortured, not just mentally. I don't know. Physically, 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 he was physically really yeah. beaten. Yes. No, not just beaten. There's a lot of other details I don't want. Speak no, about it uh, still because you are not in a secure position now, not in a secure place. But uh, I know people who was from this side, from Luhan's side, who was very interested in that situation, and they say that it is uh, uh, just uh, damage and also uh, just uh, like authority. Authority. Like yes, authority yeah. of Luhansk Republic. So just it's uh, working against their image. So it have to be judged. Mm. So as uh, there's some hope that it it will be conducted, but uh, I actually <laughs> I have less hope for Ukrainian for Ukrainian case for my case. So actually, is what you're saying that the rule of law for journalists? Yeah. Is better on the uh, on the Russian rebel side, uh, on the separatist side, than the Ukrainian government side. Uh, it's difficult to say because we don't know about a lot of situations. Because, for example, uh, not just me and my two friends was uh, in in jail of that uh, was kidnapped uh, from the Ukrainian side. There was also uh, at least three at um, at that moment when I was because that was just uh, three. Uh, situations like like our like our own so that was also Ukrainian journalist was kidnapped. I don't speak about uh, this uh, Russian journalist who was uh, constantly uh, arrested uh, by Ukrainian forces, by Ukrainian police uh, police forces, yeah. by Ukrainian army. So it was not safe for them to work on Ukrainian side. Of course, there's uh, some situations uh, on. Uh, this Lugans people's power, Donetsk people's power, but, but but less. And I, as far as I know, for example, few cases uh, where there was in Lugans people's power, there was just two days, just was mm. uh, two days in in jail, and just was uh, set it free, and nothing. Uh, they they did nothing to them. Nothing. Just yes. And and, uh, and of course we have to remind the viewers that uh, both you and Sergei and Oma, uh, you are Ukrainian citizens, yeah. and uh, the government of uh, Ukraine yeah. was actually not arresting, but kidnapping uh, their own citizens. 
Yeah, we can say it was government because uh, government d knows nothing about us, but uh, the problem is the government tolerating it. They just have some, there was some uh, noise, some uh, conflict, some scandals when we were just appeared after this uh, kidnapping, but after that it was calmed. And nothing, and now it's nothing. No, no investigation, no money, nothing. Uh, Lord to God, we give, uh, we receive some help to make, uh, to issue new passports. Yes, little bit there was helpful, but it was just after we pushed it and we started to ask this help from this one of uh, this uh, consular of uh, inter minister. So he gave his permission to issue passports to us urgently. So it just was uh, one point of the help that we get, uh, received. So, just. so uh, Celia, it has been a great pleasure uh, hearing your story. And I think it's a story uh, a lot of people, I mean, were speaking in English. You are giving your first interview in English. And I appreciate that you do the effort. <laughs> But I, I do think that people in the West uh, really need to get a clear understanding of uh, what is going on in Ukraine. And uh, we just have to continue to work for the safety of journalists, no matter if they're sympathetic to the Ukrainian or Russian or whatever side. Thank you very much. Thank you.